All right, I'm back. How's it going, everyone? Uh, Maryland here. Forgot who I was for a moment. <laughs> Don't you hate it when that happens? That's the worst. It's like, who am I again? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, we're back with more training. Only have a few levels to go, I guess. Root and Inflamed are almost caught up. Maybe by the end of this stream we'll be there. So there's only going to be, uh... Only gonna be an hour left of this stream. Yeah, I know, sorry, because we had the Nintendo Direct at the usual stream time, and, you know, I still only have X amount of time. I can do stuff in a day. This is my schedule. Seven, after seven, I go grab some dinner, and then I come back and I record and edit videos for another three hours. And then I can do whatever I want at night. That's fine, that's... Well, it's so weird, because I've beaten Xenoblade Chronicles 2, so I don't know what to do anymore with my nights. It's crazy. I gotta, like, find a new video game to latch onto or something. Um, buddy. Hey. Could you, like, fight me or something already, dude? Seriously. Okay, let's... There we go. Finally. This guy was not being cooperative. Not at all. New Game Plus yet. Uh, I haven't started New Game Plus yet. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Or, like, if I want to do some other stuff first. But I think I'll probably just do it. Play Okami. I really should do that. <laughs> Bootmaster is saying, you know the game I'd suggest. It starts with a donkey and rhymes with topical sneeze. Huh. What is that? Um, optical breeze? I don't think there's a donkey optical breeze, but I might I might be mistaken here. <laughs> I really don't know. I'll do some looking around. That's something else I was thinking about doing, guys. So I have this laptop. By the way. Oh man, <laughs> let me talk to you about this laptop, all right? I ordered this thing back in October, and it was really cool. Like, I had a little bit of extra money because, you know, streaming and YouTube, it, it was good. So it's like, you know what? I have some money. I'm going to, to do something. I felt like my computer is still super strong, so I didn't really need to get a new computer or upgrade that. In fact, I had my old computer that I needed to still get rid of, which I did. I gave that to my dad, and he loves it now. So, like, I was just trying to think, okay, well, what do I do? So I ended up getting a laptop, and some of you might actually remember, I ordered it live on stream, uh, which was really funny. But I was waiting for a good price, and that was one of the ones I was looking at. And there was, a, it was a $1,200, and there was a $150 gift card. Well, cool, that makes it pretty darn cheap, right? Well, let me tell you, it took a literal eternity for that darn gift card thing or the darn rebate to get in. It got in in the form of a rebate and it was like pulling teeth. So they give an example, this is MSI. That's the, uh, the manufacturer, they did the rebate. That's who I have the laptop on. And the laptop works fairly well. Like, I'm not complaining about that. I just, I have my issues due to this whole rebate process. So again, <laughs> I'll say it right now and I'll say it afterwards. If you see an MSI product and there's a rebate on it, run, all right? <laughs> Don't let that influence your decision. So I got this laptop and then it's like, okay, I should probably send in the rebate. So I, I did sent in the rebate. I, I thought I had everything together for it, but they're like super vague. They had a picture of the things that you needed to include. Well, they didn't ever send an email confirmation saying that it was declined. And apparently it was something else entirely that they were very vague about. So yeah. So I contacted them about that. And I said, hey, your thing said this, and now you're telling me I need this? What? That doesn't make sense. 
So I ended up uploading, like I took a picture of it and I uploaded it and that was fine. That was back in December. Okay. So then they, uh, and I actually gave them credit at this point. They did retroactively approve it. Uh, on December 26th, okay, that's when it was approved in their system. Like, you have to, you don't get emailed, you don't get any sort of status update, so I had to go to this specific site just to, uh, just to see this. And then on top of that, 31, oh, I'm getting a little, <laughs> a little ahead of myself here. Then on top of that, I had to wait, like, all this time. So they finally approved it on December 26th. Okay, and I thought I read it was four to six weeks before you get the gift card, but it'd be a $150 like gift card type thing. Okay, so I wait and then it's like middle of February, I think. And I check and I see no status update. I still haven't gotten it. I'm like, hey, just kind of asking, you know, what's the deal? You said four to six weeks. It's been that. And then they, uh, they get back and they say, uh, or wait, maybe I said it's been, I don't know, something, basically it said it was five to seven weeks at some point. Maybe I read that or maybe they re responded to it with that. <sighs> and then I, uh, I ended up like saying, hey, it's been eight weeks now. What's the deal? It's not here. And they're like, oh, well, it'll be five to seven weeks. Yeah, I just got done saying it's been eight weeks. What part of that don't you understand? <laughs> so, yeah. All right, we'll escalate this to our financial department or whatever. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I was wondering if it would ever get here, but it finally got here. So now I'm not going to look at my laptop with this intense hatred anymore. <laughs> now I feel I can actually use this thing. Um, so that's good. It, it's really miserable. I'm never gonna get anything MSI again if there's a rebate. I might if there's not because I did technically still get it. It just was like, like pulling teeth, like I said. Uh, but yeah, that's my experience, so keep that in mind if you see a rebate through them. It is very, very difficult. But where I was going with this, I have this laptop, right? And I wanted to get a laptop because I don't need a new desktop. I don't need an upgrade, but having a portable system that I could take with me on trips or like even just in the living room and record stuff. Uh, that's kind of something that I wanted to do. So I, I ended up getting that. And what I might end up doing with this laptop, and I actually did this, it had a purpose and a use. I recorded my entire, uh, my entire Ultra Sun playthrough, like my first playthrough. So I have all the footage for that. And that was actually pretty smart. So then that's how I can get differences between, um, differences between Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for my walkthrough series whenever I do that. But yeah, I was thinking of maybe recording some games and doing reviews. Oh, hey, how's it going, Super Joshy Party Animal 123? Oh, gee, I used to watch you when I was a kid. It's so awesome that I found this stream. Yeah, that's great. That's great. There's actually a lot of old timers, or at least a lot of people who've been around for a while in the stream chilling, which is awesome. It's great that so many people have been tuning in on YouTube and are rediscovering me now on Twitch. But yeah, I, I do streams on Twitch now. I do Nuzlocks. I'm still doing videos on YouTube. It's pretty cool. Uh, what is a rebate? Asks Vor Milotic. And it's basically like something that you, uh, you either get it as an instant rebate, so if it says it's, you know, uh, 800 pounds, for instance, but there's a 10% rebate or a 50 pound rebate or something along those lines, like, if it's instant, you get it right away. If it's, uh, like a mail-in rebate, you'd have to take, well, at least in the, uh, the US, you get, like, a receipt and stuff. You usually have to mail that in. 
with like a signed form. You have to take the original receipt and then usually like a picture or cut out the UPC code thing on it and you know that that kind of stuff. And then after usually an exorbitant amount of time, you end up getting either like a check or a gift card of some sort that's of the value that they they advertise. So in this case, it was a $150 rebate and uh, I had to wait on that, but I got it in the form of a gift card. So it's kind of like getting a discount on it, but I technically paid the full price when I bought it, if that kind of makes sense. Wow, Sleepy Sneasel saying, been watching your content for officially over 10 years. Feels amazing to hear that. That's really great. I guess it has been that much time, wow. Yeah, why they don't sell it for the lower price, it's kind of a mystery. I think there's probably some kind of like tax benefits or they can use the money for like investing. So it's like a good way to kind of raise some capital in the immediate amount of time. So that's a possibility as to why. I don't I don't know for sure, but if I were to take a guess, I should boast more about that last attack. I mean, if you want me to. Guys, did you see that last attack? That last attack was something else, man. That thing was crazy. That thing was crazy, okay? That was like the best last attack I have ever used. <laughs> oh, man. You know, actually, I wanted to say something else. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been tuning in for ages, and that's really cool. But I was thinking about this, I think, last night and thinking, wow, you know, there's something else really important. How many of you are really new? How many of you have only been like following me or watching me for like a year or maybe even like a few months, like maybe even less? I don't know. Um, that's something that I, I'm actually really interested in. And I guess I could kind of share a story. I had this realization while I was brushing my teeth <laughs> last night. Now I remember. And it's kind of sad. It is actually kind of sad. And I, I guess I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, I, I sometimes have confidence issues or self-confidence issues. And I do see those manifest especially when interacting with new viewers or new people. And I always feel like, why would you want to watch me? I'm not all that great. And I'm not trying to be like self-defeatist. I, I always just feel like other people are better than me or that I'm doing something wrong. I feel really comfortable with my core community. And that's great. You guys are awesome. And I'm, I would love to have more people in that so again if you're new hey stick around we got a great great place great time here but it's also one of those things that i i find that i always am fearful of being judged or fearful of oh you know he he's got an annoying voice or oh this or that i mean i'm, I'm kind of over that like people calling me fat or people calling me annoying or whatever else like okay whatever you know I've, I've kind of grown some thick skin to those comments but it's really more of just like am I doing good enough am I you know if someone tunes in and they don't really know a lot of the memes am, am I pushing them away like I've been trying to do a much better job at that if someone comes in and they don't know what a wedlock is or something really obvious I think in the past, I always tried, I didn't really try, but I, I was just, I wasn't very good at that. It's like, oh, well, you should know. And that's kind of not the right attitude, if you ask me. And I, I just feel like it's it's one of those things that I, I've been like examining in my personality. And I just feel like, well, why would someone watch me when they could watch someone else? And, I, you know... <laughs> It's kind of kind of sad because by thinking that it's completely ignoring what a great reception you guys give. You know, you guys are very awesome and you know, I don't ever want that to be confused. That's not the case at all. I'm not looking for sympathy or pity. I'm actually just trying to share with you guys like a personal story and um you know, just kind of how I feel cuz I felt this way for a while. 
And I don't want to be the best. That's not what it's about. I don't want to be popular. I don't want to be like, you know, on top. I just want to have stuff to share with you guys and have a good, you know, a good time, I guess. And I feel like the larger people get as far as popularity goes, the less that can kind of shine through. So, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's got me tearing up a little bit anyway, just talking about it. But that's how I feel. And it's something that I, uh, I still struggle with while streaming. But you guys really do help. So, again, this is kind of going back to all of you new people here that have just discovered me. You know, maybe in the past year or maybe in the past few months or something like that. Thank you for sticking around. I'm glad that, uh, you know, if you're new, you won't be new forever. And hopefully you enjoy uh, the content that I'm making and the times we're sharing together. So, yeah. Uh, Mars Ender subscribing with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for the big service. Really do appreciate that. That is awesome. Oh man, thank you so much. Uh, Whoopmaster is saying, I've always enjoyed your voice and personality, Devin, if I may be candid for a minute. I think you have a pleasant sounding voice, your commentary style is very fun, and you just have a very appreciable attitude. Well, thanks for the kind words, I do appreciate that. I know my voice, it's on the nerdier side. I don't feel bad about it anymore, but I, uh, I do feel more comfortable with it. Uh, let's see, Bibber saying, hi, can someone explain to me what Nuzlocke means? I've been getting more into the Pokemon streams recently on a bit of a nostalgia trip. I would like to know what Nuzlocke means. That is a very good question. You'll see that all over the place on, uh, like, YouTube and Twitch. And in a nutshell, it's kind of like a challenge mode. It's a self-imposed challenge that, that people will do, they'll start over a new uh, a new Pokemon game, and the goal isn't to catch all the Pokemon or all that, it's to kind of challenge yourself in difficult situations. Because there are two very important rules in at least the, the, base, uh, the base Nuzlocke rules. Those are, any Pokemon that faints is considered dead, and you have to either release it or keep it permanently boxed, like in a, a death box, so to speak. Now, you may be thinking, whoa, why would anyone want to do that? And that's a really good question. Why? Well, because it adds to the suspense. It adds to the challenge. And that's where the other rule for, uh, for the Nuzlocke challenge comes into play. For any route or area, you can only catch the first... Pokemon that you encounter. So, for instance, I'm on Route 214. Whatever the first Pokemon I run into is, that's the only thing I can catch. So, in a nutshell, you don't really know what your team is going to look like. I know before I did Nuzlocke, I, uh, you know, I'd always want to use my favorites, and I found it to be less about the story. You know, it's like, oh, I can just heal whoever. It doesn't really matter. It actually wasn't... It's just more methodical, like, all right, let's just get through this game. But ever starting, or ever since starting Nuzlocke, it's kind of been one of those things that it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes you're in a dire situation and one of your Pokemon, it gets a crit right when it matters. And that's so cool. I, I love it when that happens. So that's why a lot of people do Nuzlocke challenges, myself included. I've done a lot of them. If you're if you're interested in them, my YouTube channel has a bunch, and it is sorted out by uh, by playlists. And I've, like I said, I've done a lot, so I add a lot of extra challenges. This right here is a wedlock, so it actually kind of pairs Pokemon up, and I can only switch between certain ones. Like I can only switch between Crown and Molar here on my layout, or Root and Inflamed. So, uh, but that's because I've done a lot of them and I can't use items in battle either. So it's really tough, but it's a great way to rediscover Pokemon. Like if you're on a nostalgia trip, you know, maybe consider taking on a Nuzlocke challenge or at the very least watch a Nuzlocke challenge on like YouTube or on Twitch. 
Because for some people, it's a... Oops, that's not my bike. For some people, it's a good way to challenge themselves. I know for me, I really like bringing the characters to life. I really like thinking, oh man, they have personality. And it kind of turns it into a story, which I really enjoy. So that's kind of what, like, Nuzlocks and the spirit of those are about, and Wedlocks, and there's all sorts of different variants too, but you'll find them all over nowadays. And hopefully that kind of explains how it works, because that's, uh, it's something that I remember when they were first kind of taken off. It's like, what the heck is that? Why would anyone want to do that? That seems silly. Absolutely. But once you try it, and if you have, like, a really good experience, it's, oh, it's just great. Alright, so while I was on that big kind of tangent here, I had a glow stick saying, I think it's mainly down to your, down, I think it's mainly your down-to-earth personality, and you answer a lot of the same questions over and over to help bring in new people. A lot of things that turn me off from new streamers and YouTubers is that they can sometimes come off as fake or putting on a face, and I know everyone kind of does that to some extent when facing a camera, but I like content creators who are just themselves and try not to put on a big personality for the views. Yeah, I'll be 100% honest. Like, when I'm streaming or when I'm doing YouTube, I'm definitely different than I am in person. Because, remember, I'm, I'm playing a game live, talking to a bunch of different people. I'm trying to think, I'm an entertainer. But that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, well, I'm fake. Because that's that's not really it. I'm, I'm just trying to, like, amplify certain parts of my personality. And, you know, like you said, a lot of people do that. And myself included, but that's still very much, uh, you know, kind of who I am. Except I'm a lot more introverted. <laughs> I really am! That's the thing that a lot of people don't kind of get, because, you know, I, I do a lot of talking, and you think I talk and talk and talk. Not so much. Not so much. Lovely lad saying, yeah, I just want to say I've been watching since your Diamond and Pearl adventures and you just made Pokemon so magical for me. I'm so glad to have discovered your streams. I can't tell you how happy it makes me feel to be watching your content again. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad. That's, that's great. All right. Scrolling back down and uh, Bibber is saying, yes, you explained really well. Thank you. I think I'd like to give it a try. I go home for spring this weekend, and I'm really wanting to pick up some Fire Red and Pearl again. Nice. Yeah, you know what? If you're, like, going back, or if you're on, like, a long road trip or something like that, it's a great time to, like, pick up an old Pokemon game and do a Nuzlocke on it. And just start with basic rules. You don't have to go overboard. You really don't. The only thing I would recommend on top of the normal, the two rules I just said, well, you nickname everything. That's like the third rule, which is really important. It gives personality, but dupes clause. So basically, if you already have a Pokemon and you encounter that Pokemon again, you don't count it as your encounter. You just keep going until you get something new. It does add to the variety. I do recommend it. But yeah, hopefully that'll be fun. All right, let's see. Shiny Misty saying, For me, I stay because you are very friendly. You have such a friendly voice. You make me feel happy and have a reason to keep going. I'm honest. I just want to make sure you are happy and you get at least a fraction of how you make me feel. Sorry if that sounds weird. You seem approachable, you know? That's what I really hope. I really hope that I can at least be approachable. I, I feel like in my earlier days... Uh... And this is also kind of another topic, but in my earlier days, I was not approachable at all. I was so separated from people. Because there were so many people, like, commenting and just going crazy over my videos, and I didn't know how to react to it. And I it kind of intentionally made it hard to get in contact with me. I didn't really trust people. I didn't really open up. And it was sad. And that's why I'm glad I'm not super popular like that. Because that was... A really bad feeling. That was also before I used Twitter and stuff. Alright, let's see. Uh, Turtwig909 saying, I love you and your personality as well as how you act human on the internet. That's why I love you. I wouldn't watch anyone else. Well, I'm glad that you do enjoy my content, but don't limit yourself to just me by any means. 
there's a lot of other great streamers and personalities and YouTubers and stuff like that out there. Um, and it's totally fine to watch them. Absolutely. Uh, Venus Queen EJ saying, I also really love how dependable you are. You don't make false promises and are clear about what to expect. That in combination with your cheerful personality and ability to make Pokemon into so much more than just a game makes you one of my favorite YouTubers. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. You guys are really awesome. I wasn't looking for sympathy or for kind words or things like that, but like, it does mean a lot hearing them. Uh, and that's why I want to read them too. If I didn't read every single one aloud, I, I do apologize. I am at least scrolling through. Um, and I do try. I do. Uh, oh man. What's crack a lackin saying? I came to the realization that I've been watching you consistently for two thirds of my life. The heck? That is really crazy. Wow. Oh man. Uh. Oh, it's, there were a few other things here. Oh yeah, I know what it was uh, about the me being dependable and making false promises. I'm sorry about the uh, the moon walkthrough or ultra moon walkthrough and you know Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and all these other series. Like I do get a lot of guilt that after a certain point there are games that it's like I just I don't know I I thought I wanted to do this and it just. I can't keep up with it, or it's just too tough, or whatever else, and I do try to at least, you know, do things that I know I can do, but yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, let's see, there were a few others here, do do do. Dude, with all these comments, you truly are a wonderful person. Well, thanks, Little Tall. Master saying, I just want to say or share nice words because of how you're talking about your previous feelings about your content. It's nice to see you're really happy with your content, though. I do try to uh, be happy and proud of what I do, to be honest. Like, that's something that I find important. Um, because, like, okay, let's take Ultra Moon. It was a really big effort and a really big thing, and it was, it was tough to make the decision to kind of stop doing that. I mean, I think it's necessary, but it was a little tough. But I'm proud of it. And that's really important to me. And maybe someday I'll go back to it, but it's nice to at least feel proud of that. And to feel proud of, you know, the Pearl Wedlock and feel proud of the Fire Red Wedlock and all that. Like, I'm enjoying these. I'm glad that I made that decision. It was a tough decision to make, but even though I suspended that series, it's not to be confused with, oh, I'm not proud of it. Like, I I think it was great. I think it was. Oh, man. Yeah, well, that's an emotional trip, <laughs> but it's fine. Thanks, guys, for, uh, for being there and for listening and sharing your thoughts too I guess I just kind of need to let that out um, you know I I'm so grateful to have such a nice community and I tell you it's it's made this a lot more manageable I feel like when I streamed back like two years ago because I know in January of 2017 that's kind of like when I really started doing streaming, like realistically. Prior to that, it was mostly just Wonder Trade Wednesday and stuff like that. Or, you know, the occasional big sleep lock thing. Like, I didn't really stream consistently. And, you know, I, I always felt like I was jumping into a shark tank sometimes. Like, I was swimming with the sharks. And, like, it was just a little, uh, a little tense, a little, a little overwhelming sometimes, and 
I don't I don't really know what it was or if it was just the people or it was probably me to be honest. I feel like I've made a conscious effort over the past year now, over a year, to you know, kind of kind of be more approachable and presentable and you know, make it more personal, I guess. And I think it's really worked. I feel like we have a good community. I'm not just, you know, uh, streaming. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. I'm not just like recording a video series and you guys are watching as I'm doing it. Like we're all going on an adventure together and that's what I like. So it's, uh, it's been a different, a big change, I guess for me, but I'm really glad that, you know, I don't know. It's so much you guys. It's not just me. I could be the nicest person in the world and still have a bunch of people that are just snots in the chat just by chance. And, you know. But thankfully, that's not the case. Thankfully, I have a great community. And you guys have a great community now, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we already talked about the Nintendo Direct, Duncan Ox. That's why. We've been talking about that for, like, well, pretty much the last hour we were doing that. So now we're kind of moving on. That's fine. I think we can we can switch topics if we have something else to talk about. I really don't know what, but... Yeah, it's frustrating when content creators make promises, Venus Queen EJ, and they're unable to stick to them. I'm very guilty of that. Like, I've, I've admitted that. Maybe someday I'll do more Mystery Dungeon on YouTube. My big problem, this is something I, I do feel kind of embarrassed about, but one of the big reasons I wasn't able, it's my voice. I feel like I just don't have the same endurance in my voice that I did when I started doing the Mystery Dungeon games. And I feel like that was such a big part of it that it's just kind of sad that I'm not really... I don't feel like I'm able to give it the same kind of character. Like, there's these expectations. So... Yeah. Um... I feel bad about it. Oh. You're level 33. You go. But, you know, I guess if I let that perfectionist thing kind of let it go a little bit. Like, I wouldn't mind doing more Super Mystery Dungeon on stream, like as a stream series. Or maybe for YouTube, do the post game as a YouTube stream. Like, that could be kind of neat. Because thankfully, we don't have to do voices as much in the post game. And for the, the other version, that I streamed like back in November, I think it was October, November. Uh, you know, it. W oh, you know what? I gotta go heal. All right, let me go do that. Uh, let's see. The Dedenne voice. I actually use an effect to increase the pitch on that. But there were still a few that I didn't, and that was pretty painful. What's crack a lackin' subscribing? Thank you so much for that big service. Really do appreciate that. Oh man, thank you so much. Oh man. <laughs> big service, finally! I can use the emotes! Yay! There you go, the emotes are all yours. That is some big service. Yeah, the emotes are fun. I need to uh, take a look some other options like we don't have any free emote slots but maybe we can shuffle some around at some point because there's a few that you know like the Garaderp one I feel like that's starting to become a little mainstream progress is good but we're kind of not like we're not really making progress with anything anymore so nope you didn't come at the right time if you wanted to skip training we're gonna be training for probably the rest of the stream but we should be good for the next episode, or the next stream, for Saturday's stream. I think. Probably. Like, we might be able to consolidate progress. That's something to consider. 
I could probably cut one of the progress things. Hey, thanks for the 20 bits. Lightning plays saying, I appreciate this conversation as a creator myself. I feel really down on myself and compare myself to others way too much. So to know I'm not alone and to see you strive in spite of how you would feel is inspiring. Thank you for everything from 2009 when I started watching to now. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words. It, uh, yeah, I definitely, I know what you mean. It's, it's tough when, you know, you're kind of not really comparing yourself to other people, but when you feel like you are or something, it's, it's tough. But focus on you, you know? That's what I've kind of learned, is rather than focusing on other people, focusing on what I can do, I think is really nice. Ten Worlds guy saying, Can I say something? Marilyn's voice is, oddly enough, really calming. On nights of little sleep, playing a vid on phone usually helps. Something about the friendly but calm tone, I suppose. Hey, well, thank you so much for the kind words. It's, uh... Like, I don't know how I feel about my voice. I guess I... Like, I don't... I don't mind it now. I know sometimes it can get a little... A little wild if something happens, but yeah, I guess I do uh, <laughs> I do listen to like some other creators and stuff and think about their voices and There's something nice about those really deep voices. But there's also something kind of nice about those just like For lack of a better word like relatable voices, you know, just normal Mine's definitely on the higher pitch side like that's fine. I've accepted that But I don't mind All right, see ya, Pokemar. Thanks for stopping by. And for uh, subscribing earlier, too. Oh man, we're getting so close. It'll be nice not to have to train again for a little bit. We have to start thinking of what we're gonna be doing. Like, should we take on Iron Island? Should we take on the gym? There's a part of me that's thinking we should just go for the gym. Because pretty much it's just going to be Crown and Molar. And then we can get Root and Inflame. Because we're not going to be using Root and Inflame. That's the sad thing. We're not going to be using them for a while. Because we need to get to Iron Island in order to get the stone for Root. And we have to get Inflamed up to level 40. But the limit is 39. So, yeah. All right, see ya, Jedi Aster. Thanks for stopping by. Five special attack. Oh, you know what? I just realized we're going to get so much special attack because we've been fighting nothing but Roselia, basically. I'm not trying to EV train. <laughs> oh, man. Also, should I go for Riolu on Iron Island? I mean, there's nothing that I really need. But, you know, we could maybe do that. Oh, look at that. Your special attack is now higher. Uh, agility. Do you need agility? You don't really need agility. Yeah, let's just not bother. You're going to be so fast. Well, that's good. At least we'll have some extra special attack. Or inflamed, because you don't really get a lot of good physical moves. That was just unintentional. Count Riolu for whatever town Byron is in. No, but you get it in Iron Island. I always count it for when you receive it. I mean, people do play differently, but for eggs, that's kind of, that's my rule with them. Oh, Flare Blitz is level 58. All right, well, <laughs> at least I don't have to worry about that. I don't want to use Flare Blitz. 
Although realistically, I wouldn't mind having it as a nuke option, but you know, I would not want to use it. Unfortunately, I don't believe Inflamed gets a lot of other good variety moves. Now, what else can we get at Iron Island? I forgot about that. I think we have everything else. Wait, we don't have Onyx, do we? Or no, I, we, did we get Onyx? I feel like we don't have Onyx. Uh, where is Iron Island? Okay, so for Pokemon, there's, yeah, basically just Zubat, Geodude, or the Geodude line, and then Onyx and Steelix. Huh. So that's pretty much it. So we might as well just repel through. Because I don't really think I want to get Steelix. I would count Riolu for Iron Island. That's usually how I handle eggs. Everyone handles eggs differently, just so that's clear. But my kind of consistent rule with them is I count them for the uh, the area that you pick them up in. Just so you don't have the ability to like breed Pokemon and then hatch them on like Route 1 in X and Y, which has nothing there. Huh, I feel like there was something else I wanted to talk about, but I don't remember what it is now. Oh yeah, we were talking about <laughs> the sellout streams. Maybe do one of those like a month or once a month or something. That's what we were kind of discussing before I got all emotional on you guys. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be adverse to it. I don't know if I'd be able to this month, but I, I might be able to in April. That could be kind of neat. Um, but yeah, that that's definitely something we gotta like talk about and think about. It wouldn't be like super sellout, you know. <laughs> I think there's a difference between like, like you know, sellout and yeah, you know, just doing like a fun event for trying to get subscribers and bits and stuff like that. Like you know, I don't do a lot of real sellout stuff. I'm not like doing paid reviews on games or things like that. And you know, I don't I don't even do I actually got a uh, a code for a game and I don't really know if I want to play it or not, but it's kind of weird. I don't I don't really want to like be paid to play someone's video games. I feel like that's a little <laughs> But I know a lot of people do it, and it's money. You know, that's fine. I understand how it is. But I feel like that's, uh... <laughs> that's where you start inching up on that, that sellout mode, right? But yeah, sellout streams, I know that these are kind of popular. People like to do them for, like, you know, you have, like, a long kind of marathon, and it keeps going based on, like, how many subscribers or bits or something, some kind of criteria. Which it could be fun. You know, maybe, like, have a six-hour stream. Cap it at, like, 12 hours. I don't want to do a 24-hour stream. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I know I know a gold member about asking for bits. I know that that's, uh, that's something that you have to be very careful on. Uh, in reading the terms, they do specifically outline for community incentives, though. So... It's not that you can give anything to any one person. And I'm very, very, very strict about that. Like, you know, it doesn't matter if you cheer one bit or 50,000, you know, you individually are getting nothing more on my stream other than, you know, the reactions and, and gratitude. But you have, uh, you know, I can't just be like, oh, well, you know, if you give me 200 bits, I'll give you this. No. Nope, can't do that. But I think, I think if it's a, uh, you know, like a bonus hour or something like that, 
where it's not any individual person getting a reward, it's a reward for the community. I believe, according to their wording, that is fine. You just, you can't solicit bits, uh, you know, to try to, like, give someone something for bits, or people can't do that <laughs> the same. Like, if they're like, hey, could you nickname something this? And they just gave me, like, 5,000 bits. It's like, well, thanks for the suggestion. I can't, <laughs> but, you know, that's how it goes. We're all really good about that here, which is great. That's one of the things I love about you guys. You know, not only are you really generous, which still blows my mind, to be honest. Absolutely blows my mind. But you don't really ask for a lot. And that's really great. You know, you guys are very respectful. You don't think that, oh, well, I'm paying to get this. I darn well better get something out of this. It's like, no, no. Wait, why am I switching? We're fine. Uh... Yeah, it's just, it's really nice, so, you guys rock, you really do, thank you so much. Waffle the boy with three bits, thank you so much for the bits. Really do appreciate that. Yeah, I'm really glad they're generous, but I'm really glad, I'm even more glad that they're gracious, you know? That's worth way more, way more to me than, you know, any financial amount, because... That was a fear. That was something I hadn't really done before, is like, take money from people. Like, what? Such a weird concept. Whoa. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's just great that it's not like, uh, you know, they're acting all entitled or anything. Oh, that's, that's a really nice community. Uh, maybe the experience share should go in braces now. Wow, we actually are getting to that point. It's kind of crazy. Hmm. Uh, will the stream on Saturday be on normal time? Yeah, it should actually... Oh, that's something else we have to talk about. Yes, this stream will on Saturday. It should be normal time. But we do have daylight saving time coming up really soon in the U.S. And I'll have to look up... Well, actually, U.S. and Canada... I'll have to look up what it is in Europe. I think it's the next week. But I don't quote me on that. Uh, Epic Finish saying, The only thing I ask is for you to be happy with what you're doing. I am! I mean, you know, it has its ups and its downs, but I'm definitely a lot happier doing this than a lot of other things. Um, so, yeah. Glad. You guys make it possible, which is awesome. Yeah, so Sunday, the streams are going to be at a different time. Well, starting Sunday. I, I don't stream on Twitch anymore on Sunday. I stream on YouTube and Facebook. But yeah, that will be, let's see, an hour earlier. Yeah, I think an hour earlier if you're watching internationally. March 25th in Europe, huh? Okay, that's... Is that two weeks? Oh, that's two weeks different. That's going to be fun. All right, so in Europe, you guys are going to need to get used to this for next week. Uh, for two weeks, if you observe summertime, as I believe it's called over there, then it's going to be, for two weeks, like an hour earlier than usual. The calendar and the schedule script should show it. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's something you'll want to be mindful of. I do have the schedule script fixed, so if you type exclamation mark schedule in the chat, it takes it to my site, <laughs> and I have a Google Calendar now that's embedded there, but you can add it to your own Google Calendar or whatever other calendar you use. Like, you can do that, and you can set your own notifications and stuff like that. So it should hopefully auto-convert it to your time zone. Even after it's on the calendar. I tested it out a few times and it seems like it works. But yeah, that's something you guys have to be very mindful of for next week. And we'll talk more about this Saturday, don't worry. But I just figured I'd give you a heads up. Because that's, uh... It's always a confusing time. It's like, wait, why are you streaming early? Or... Yeah, actually, let's see. If it were early... A lot of people would be like, wait, what did I miss? What happened? 
Yes, so the Pearl Wedlock streams will still be at 4 p.m. Central Time. It'll just be 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So, and I always do uh, mention that. You'll see me start to change over to CDT instead of CST, since we're now moving over to Daylight Time, or Daylight Saving Time. But, yeah, if you are not observing Daylight Saving Time or summertime in Europe or Australia. I don't know what it is on Australia either. Uh, <laughs> so have fun with that. It's going to be a little bit of a mess for March, but I'll try to at least look into that a little bit and let you guys know. And it'll only be for like a two week period if you do observe summertime in Europe. Which isn't too bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I bet a lot of you wish that it would be an hour earlier in general. Uh, and I do feel bad. Like, again, I know I've talked about this a few times, but I really feel like the 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time, or at least for me, it just tends to work out the best. So, uh, yeah. Because if I had it any earlier, even one hour earlier, and then, like, pretty much everyone on the west coast of the U.S. and Canada wouldn't be able to make it as easily. At least the people in school. And if I had it any later, then people in Europe wouldn't be able to tune in. Or if they did, it'd be really late. Oh, man. Yeah, and don't some states, Little Tall, use a, a half hour difference? I'm not sure if that's for daylight saving time, but just like in general. That always confused me. It's like, oh man. <laughs> I always say like top of the hour, but for places like India, and I believe, where was it? Southern Australia? I think they use. Uh, like 30 minute, whatever you call it. Like if it's one o'clock here, you know, maybe it's 1230 there. It's like, wait, what? Don't do this to me. <laughs> this is way too confusing. Way too confusing. At least to me, you know, that's fine. Oh man, 1 a.m. there, John Burgess 96. That's pretty late, <laughs> but thanks for staying up to uh, watch me fight a bunch of Roselia. <laughs> it means a lot. Oh man. Hey, I remember that properly with South Australia. Nice. And India. Yeah, I remember those two in specific. I think there's a few others, but that always freaked me out. I know, uh, actually Indianapolis in Indiana, they used to do that for the longest time. It's like, why are you doing this? You're one city, you can't just do that. I think they finally changed it, but I, I remember reading about that and thinking that's just so bizarre. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Pokemar's saying, Root is horrified watching his family get slaughtered. I guess that is a rather interesting relationship, if you think about it. Here Inflamed is showing off by burning almost the entirety of Root's kind. Huh. That's pretty, uh, pretty something, that's for sure. India is ten and a half hours ahead of US time. Whoo, man. I think 
think I'll put the experience share on braces once we get everyone to 37. Or at least once we get these two to 37. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is a little weird. Man. Yeah, that definitely got pretty dark. Root wants to learn Toxic? Ooh. You know, I think I'm gonna get rid of Stun Spore for Toxic. That might actually be very helpful. Yeah, let's do that. Nice, free Toxic, that's pretty cool. Especially, I mean, I know I have the TM for it, but TMs are not multi-use. Oh gosh, it's seven. All right, well, let me save the game. And I guess that's gonna, oh yeah, Toxic Leech Seed Giga Drain. That's actually gonna be really good. Woohoo! nice. All right, well, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, it's a little shorter of a stream, but, you know, we had that nice Nintendo Direct earlier. So, we're gonna be continuing this and hopefully making some progress on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon Pearl Wedlock Stream. Oh yeah, see you next time, everyone.